Okay, first let's start with the trigonometry. Um, so here they have given it's a Greek word measurement of triangles. Actually, this trigonometry was derived from the word trigonon and metron. Okay, trigonon measuring the sides of the triangle. That's the exact meaning of trigonometry. Okay, we are going to read about many types of triangles in trigonometry. Okay, trigon and metron. You understand? Okay, Josh. Mm -hmm. So the next one, what are the central angle of a circle? Just one second. I'll download this so that I can write it on the uh, notes. Okay. Yeah, even I can write it here itself. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Central angle of a circle. What is that central angle? These are the basic definition you should know to go inside. Okay. So that's what we are going to see now. First one is what is its definition of your trigonometry? What is the central angle? Angle whose vertex you call it to be the center of the circle. Okay. Angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. That's called as a central angle of a circle. Okay. So when you are going to have a circle like this, okay. Fine, George. And this is going to make an angle means this is called as a central angle. We call it. Okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. Next. What are complementary angles? Two positive angles whose sum is going to be 90 degree measurements, we call it to be the complementary angles. Okay. This I hope you would have studied in your fourth and fifth grade itself. What are mm -hmm. your supplementary angles? Two positive angles whose sum measurement, when you add up, you should get 180 degrees. Okay. What is degree? The most common unit of angle measure denoted by the symbol. This one you call it to be the degree. Okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm going to say, a measure of one degree is equivalent to a rotation of one over 360. That means a one complete revolution has happened. Okay. Because in a circle, we start from zero and we end up with 360. That's why it's one upon 360. Okay. Yes, George, got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. One second. I need to move down just one second. Now I think. Okay. okay. Now let's go into the thing of your one second. Let me remove all these things. Okay. Is it okay? I will open the file here, George. Because yep. it's confusing for me. One second. Sure. Just one second. Let me open it here. The writing part will be easier for me. Okay, yeah. Now coming to the definition of an angle. How you are getting an angle? An angle is determined by rotating a day ray, okay, half line about its end points. Okay, fine. You are going to rotate a particular ray about this half point, you will get an angle. Okay, next. What is the definition of an initial side? Initial side means the starting position of a particular angle where it is formed. Okay, from here only it's starting. So this mm -hmm. is called as an initial side, and it gets ended at this point. You call it to be the terminal side. Okay, so the position of the ray after the rotation when an angle is formed, you call it to be the terminal side. Okay, then coming to the part of what is the vertex of an angle. Vertex means it's nothing but the end point of the ray where it both the uh, how an angle is formed. An angle is formed by joining two rays, okay, and where the two rays meet at a common point, the common point you call it to be the vertex, okay. You understood, Josh? Okay. Yep, yep. Now, an angle is a standard position when the angle's vertex is the origin, okay. Of a coordinate system and its initial side coincides with the positive x axis. So standard position means when your angle's vertex will be at the origin, okay, of a coordinate system and its initial side coincides with the positive x axis, okay. That means like this it should be. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is the origin. This is called as a standard position, okay. That means this initial side, okay, and this one gets. Coinciding with the positive x axis. Okay. Next, what is your positive angle? It's generated by a counterclockwise rotation, whereas a negative angle is generated by a 
clockwise rotation. Got it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if two angles are co-terminal, then they have the same initial side and same terminal side. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, see this. Oh, can you just scroll again? Sorry. sorry yeah, I just yeah, want to yes. get the last word done. Yeah, yeah. So when you say the two angles are co-terminal, then they have when they have the same initial side and same terminal side. Okay. You are having two angles here. You understand? See. Like this somewhere. You understand? Okay. Same initial side and same terminal side. Okay. For example, I've shown there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next coming to your radiant measure. This is very important when you go to your unit circle. Okay. So why we are introducing all these things here? If you are thorough with this, the unit circle will be easier for you. Okay. Now, the measure of an angle is determined by the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. Obviously, how you measure your angle from your terminal side, how much it has turned uh, till to your, term, uh, sorry, initial side to terminal side, that will measure your angle. Okay. Fine. Now, what is one radian? One radian means it's a measure of a central angle theta. That means, so if I'm going to have an angle in a particular circle, okay, fine. This is the vertex I'm going to have. Sorry, for example, I'm showing you, okay, fine. So one radian means where your intercepts of an arc S equal in length to the radius of the circle, okay? You understand? Mm -hmm. This part. Okay, next. What are central angle? Central angle of one full revolution. That means it becomes a counterclockwise there. Okay, corresponds to an arc length of S. That is 2 pi R. You understand? Mm -hmm. Central angle of one full revolution will be 2 pi R always. Okay, next. A full revolution of a circle of radius R will correspond to an angle of 2 pi radians. Okay. A half revolution will be pi here. Okay. Full revolution means it is 2 pi the radians. And half a revolution of that will be pi. Because half means already 2 pi was there for full revolution. Half of that will be pi. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mr. <laughs> Next one. Angles with measures between 0 and pi by 2 radians will be acute angle. Okay. So, uh, 0 to pi by 2, obviously, you will have 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, like that, okay? And angle measures between 90 degree and 180, that would be abduce angles, okay? Now, what you have to do, if they are asking you to find an angle that is co-terminal to a given angle theta, means you need to add or subtract 2 pi, okay? Fine, to measure the angle of theta. For example, see this. Find an angle that is co-terminal with theta equals to negative pi upon h. Okay. So what you need to do? Here it is negative pi upon h. They have given. Okay. You need to add or subtract 2 pi. Okay. To measure the angle of theta. So what you will do here? Can you guess, George? It's 45. Yes. Right. Okay. Next one. Uh, find the sublimate. Okay. Uh, one minute. One minute. Hmm. Yeah, it's 45. Sorry. Yeah. Find the sublimate of theta equals to pi by 4. No, um, no, sorry. Wait a second. It won't be 45, actually. It'll just be 22.5. One but, second. I mean, like, the angle itself will be, um, uh, like, 22.5, but the co-terminal angle will be 15, point, uh, 15 pi over 8. Yes, right, 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 right. And, um, pi over yes. 4, the co-terminal angle, yeah. So yeah, the yeah. supplement of pi over 4 will just be um, 3 pi over 4. Yes, the first one will be approximately, I think, so 335 or something. Yeah, this one is supplement. Okay, yes, correct. Okay. Now come this. A full revolution around the circle corresponds to 360 degree. This I told you. When you have a circle, it starts with 0, 90, 180, 360. Okay. So 270 and then when it reaches again here, it becomes 360. And that's why 360 degree is called as a complete angle. Okay. Next, half revolution will be 180 degree. Okay. This one. Got it? Yes, George. Mm -hmm. Now, next one. To convert degree to radians. This is very important. You will get many problems based on that. When they are giving a degree and they are asking you to convert it into radian, okay, you multiply that degree by 180 degree. 
okay fine mm-hmm. so phi radians you are going to multiply by 180 degree okay to convert your radians to degree you need to multiply your radians by 180 degree that's the thing okay got it mm-hmm. so now convert 120 degree to radians they have given the degree they are asking you to convert it into radians Got it. So converting 120 degrees to radians, that would just be 2 pi over 3. And converting 9 pi over 8 from radians to degrees would just basically be, <clears throat> three, uh, it'll be um, 405. Yes. No. Oh, wait, sorry. No, that's, nine pi, nine. sorry that's 9 pi over 8. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, then it'll yeah. be um, 202.5. Sorry. I thought it said I'm, uh, <clears throat> I thought that was reading something else. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. No problem. Okay. So for each and every... Uh, degree they have given the radians measure here okay mm-hmm. okay now what are applications of angles okay so for a circle of radius r a central angle theta will intercept an arc length okay s is equals to r theta okay the theta you call it to be the measure in radians okay now if i'm going to have r is equal to one and s is theta the radian measure of theta will be equals to the arc length actually Fine. Mm-hmm. So, how we will find when they are giving a linear speed? They are asking you to find the linear speed. If S is the length of the arc and T is the time, okay, the linear speed formula is arc length over time, that is S over T. This is the formula you need to find the linear speed of a particle when they are in terms of angles, okay, in a coordinate mm-hmm. plane. They are, giving. they are asking you to find the angular speed, means the formula is central angle divided by the time. Okay, linear speed is arc length divided by the time, angular speed is central angle divided by the time. Okay, yes, Josh. Yeah, just make a note of these formulas so when the problem oh, yeah. comes, it will be. Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's go to the uh, next one. So you can just try this one and see a six inch diameter gear makes 2.5 revolutions per second. Find the angular speed of the gear in radians per second. Just try this and check whether you are getting this answer. Okay, no, so um, it's six speed. inch di. Yeah, so it's six uh, inch diameter, which means that it's gonna have a radius of three. Yes, right. And it makes two point five revolutions per second. So that basically means it's uh doing that around five radians mm-hmm. per second. Yeah, because yes, five five radians. Five, per second. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Okay, next. Coming to a sector, this all these definitions in circles itself you have read, it's just a review. What is a sector of a circle? Region bounded by two radii of the circle. So, and the intercepted arc. So, if I'm going to have a circle, and this, this is the, this is nothing but a radii, right? From the center to this. And this is also becomes a radii. So this one becomes the sector of a circle, the region bounded by two radii of the circle and the intercepted arc. Okay, so <coughs> for any circle of radius r, area formula for this area of a sector of a circle is nothing but a equals to 1 over 2 times r square times theta. This formula is very important uh, because when you go to integral calculus or something, it is very useful for you. Okay. This formula okay. we will be using for integrating the given, they will give a curve or any function they will give you and they will ask you to integrate or differentiate, even for differentiation. Okay, so this formula is very important, area of a sector of a circle. That is 1 over 2 times r square theta. Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. Let me take the next one. So I will give the introduction for 4.2 also, then we will move on to the uh, book exercises okay so it will be okay yeah so now the first coming to the definition of an unit circle okay so what is a unit circle just one second i'll go this to that one second josh i'm just opening it yes Okay, what is a sub- unit circle? As I told you, a circle of radius 1, the center must be at the origin and given by the equation x square plus y square equal to 1, okay, is called as a unit circle. Okay, you understand? Mm-hmm. So, unit circle means it's with center at the origin 
radius 1 and with the equation x square plus y general equation of a circle is x square plus y square equal to r square since your radius is 1 here we are just replacing with that okay yes next coming to the important definition which we will be using here is a period what is a period a function f is periodic if there is going to exist a positive real number c okay in between whatever period uh, period uh, the interval they have given okay such that f of t plus c that means you are going to, a function is there you are going to give a small change to that function f of t plus c will be equal to t for all t in that particular domain okay the smallest number c for which f is periodic is called as a period of f okay? can i just read that for a second sorry yeah um shall i repeat it again yeah it's okay yeah definitely so f a function f you are going to say when it will be periodic you are going to have a function okay in that uh, if you are going to give a small you are going to take a small number c in that it is not going to change anything to your function okay but if i am going to give a small uh, addition or something to the function okay that is f of t plus c if i am finding and that is also equal to f of t means okay for all the domain in that particular thing then the smallest number c for which f is periodic periodic means the f of t plus c equal to f of c okay the change mm -hmm. originally it was suppose if i'll take f of x or the circle to be um some value i will take here they have given any value here suppose one second okay i will take my own suppose if i'm saying f of um x equal to x for example i'm saying okay x or x squared i will take okay now if i am going to say x plus 2 so what will happen it's nothing but it will be x squared x plus 2 the whole square right but it will uh, the value after substituting or something f of x and f of x plus 2 will be the same it is equal yeah. that's called as a periodic the number whatever you have added to that which is making the function periodic after changing also it is periodic that's called as a period of f okay that is okay here I've, uh, the period will be two for us that small number which doesn't make any changes in the function after adding to the given function also you call it to be the period okay does it usually represent an entire revolution or can it be smaller uh, it can be a uh, no, not a full revolution. It can be a smaller. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, next one. As the real number line is wrapped around the unit circle, each real number t corresponds to this point x comma y on the circle. Okay. So the real number two pi corresponds to the point one comma z. Okay. You understand? Now, mm -hmm. each number real number t also corresponds to a central angle theta. This uh, we have seen already, whose radian measure will be t. Okay. Now, with this interruption, the arc length formula, this is the formula for calculating the arc length. Okay. S is equals to r times theta with radius always equals to 1. Okay. Indicate what is that meaning? The real number t is the length of the arc intercepted by the angle theta given in the radius. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. Josh, you understood? Yes. yes. Next, coming to your trigonometric functions. Okay. Obviously, when we are dealing with a unit circle, we are in a need of using the trigonometric functions. Okay. So, the coordinate of x and y are two functions of the real variable t. Okay. It will have a six trigonometric functions of t. Okay. Sine, we will have it as sine, cosine, you, all, you know all these things, tangent, co cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, these are the six trigonometric functions we are need in or for defining a unit circle. Okay, so now I am going to take let t be a real number, x comma y be the point on a unit circle corresponding to t. Okay, now we are going to complete the following definitions of the trigonometric functions here. Sin t equals to y. This uh, I hope uh, you have studied in your lower grades when they are describing the trigonometric function. You remember? Uh, one second. If not, I'll tell you. No, I I know that I'm um 
Sine is basically equal to um uh, let's just say um x uh that cosine even... is equal to y yes. um tangent is basically equal to um y over x yes because it is becoming we are sorry, using the Pythagoras y. theorem yes Pythagoras yeah. theorem there it's a right angle triangle zero comma zero one comma zero the same type okay good now uh, the cosecant function will be the reciprocal of the sine and cotangent will be the reciprocal of tangent and secant function will be the cosine function okay now. Uh, this is the tablet form we will be using. When t is 0, your x will be 1 and y will be 0. Okay. Find that x comma y coordinates they are talking about. Okay. When it is 45 degree, okay, the value will be square root of 2 by 2. You remember? Uh, mm -hmm. It is cosine of uh, sine and cosine. We are just talking yeah. about sine and cosine. Okay. Then sine 0 is 0. Sine, uh, cosine of 0 is 1. Sorry, cosine of 90. Yeah. Then sine, cosine, sine, cosine, like that, all the values corresponding to that, okay? Now, when you are going to have it for pi by 6, pi by 3, pi by 2, what all the values they have shown here? Yes, George, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, this I showed it in the unit circle. They are just showing it separately, okay? Yes. Now, find the following, cosine of pi by 3. Can you so find cos it? yeah, cosine of pi by three could just basically um, be cosine of sixty, and cosine of sixty is also just one half. Yes, right. Um, tangent of three pi over four that's yes. basically also the same thing as <clears throat> uh minus tangent of sorry <clears throat> would it also be the same thing as um minus tangent of uh, pi over four so one thirty five. Mm, okay, so, so then the one be minus one. Yes, right. Okay. And then cosecant of seven pi over six, that's um basically um equivalent to two ten and cosecant of um two ten. Uh I don't have to know that one. Would it be just actually um, initially negative? when you are going to have the unit circle, we know only the values of sine and cosine. Okay. Yeah, so uh, oh wait, quick question, quick quick question then. So um co cosecant, right? Basically, mm. so um it's seven pi over two, and that's also gonna be um uh seven pi over two, and that's also the same thing as um uh negative um pi over six and that also is um negative uh thirty so then that will also be um a uh, sine of thirty and that would just be um uh one half and since it's cosy can you reverse them so I'll be two over one and since the negative will be negative two right yes obviously good okay okay next coming to your domain and period of sine and cosine okay so the sine function domain will be the set of all real numbers and the range will be from negative one to one as we have seen the uh, unit circle, it starts with uh, the zero and ends with this side, 180 degrees. So negative one to one, okay? This is for the sine function. You can make the domain and range, okay? And for the cosine function, again, the domain and range will be set of all real numbers and the range will be negative one comma one, okay? Period of the sine function will be two pi and cosine function is also two pi, okay? And which trigonometric functions are even function? Cosine and secant will be even functions. Okay. That means you will have your f of x will be equal to um, yeah, negative x. Negative f of x will be equal to negative f of x will become odd functions. Okay. Got it, George? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then what are the odd functions? Sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent will be odd functions. Okay. Now evaluate sine 3 31 pi upon 6. So here you will be. That's basically the same. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's basically yes, the same can. thing as um, uh, five. Um, you were saying mm. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, that basically um reduces to uh pi. <clears throat> sorry, that basically is um the same thing as um seven pi over six, and seven pi over six will be two ten in this case. And like mm. I said, um, it will just be negative one half. Yes, right. Okay, and using the calculator, this is part is easy tangent of 4 pi by 3 and cos, uh, cosine of 3, okay? Yeah, so tangent of 4 pi by 3 would just basically be um, uh, <clears throat> uh, 240 in this case. Yes, right. And Yeah, 240 in this case, and uh, cosine of 3, so 2, okay, got it. Yes, okay, next one, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, now so I might we do some problems now, it's okay? Yes, yes, obviously. One second.